Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto Update. In case you haven't looked at your phone today, the market has had a flash crash. We have dropped heavily across the board and we have rebounded pretty well across many of the cryptocurrencies. Now I want to go through some of the major questions which I've seen across my socials today. Is the crypto crash over? Is it safe to buy cryptos now? What caused the Bitcoin flash crash? And which cryptos should I buy if in fact you believe you should be buying at this point in time? So make sure you've hit that like button before we get started. It does go a long way to helping out the video in that YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, hit all. You can always unsubscribe later. It is free if you find no value from the videos. All right, let's crush in to the content. The first thing we have is the schedule for today. So I've got a few of the questions as I mentioned. We'll go through some of the crypto news and then of course the price charts. There is something really interesting across the board of the majors and the differences between the strong and the weak horses. We've talked about that a fair bit on the channel and it is no offense to anyone that holds different cryptocurrencies. I, I have to say that at the beginning of the videos because some people get really offended and I just want people to understand and just learn from the charts and from the news. It's not about a war between your crypto versus mine. Let's all hopefully make money in the bull market and make sure you just take some profits along the way as well. Now, if you do want to learn more about trading and investing in crypto stocks and the property market, check out the Investor Accelerator. Now, the Patreon link is down below. At this rate, we're getting about eight to 10 people signing up per day. So this would be probably end in about 9, 10, 11 days, just depending on the market, of course. So if you are interested, check out the link down below and sign up for the Investor Accelerator Patreon group. Taking a look at the market caps, we are down to a $2.08 trillion market cap. So still sitting comfortably above 2 trillion, well, slightly comfortably above 2 trillion. A lot of the cryptos over the last 24 hours are down between that 10 and 20 or so percent. The stronger horses, which you guys are probably familiar with now if you've been following the channel, stuff like Solana is actually up against the dollar value and Bitcoin value. And then things like FTT, which is another one we'll talk about today, is only down about 5%. But when we look at it on its Bitcoin value, it's actually up. So these are cryptos which have been rising while Bitcoin has been falling. So we're just looking at the 24-hour uh, numbers here. And if they're in negative, then they have fallen against Bitcoin and against their dollar value, which puts them even lower. But FTX has held up against its Bitcoin value. And that's what you want to see on this page here. And the, the other ones that are held up are all stable coins. They're around that 12 to 13%. And of course, Solana is up 20% against Bitcoin in this drop. Fear and greed is at around 47. So we're just in neutral, nothing extreme fear at the moment. And taking a look at some of the questions is, is it safe to buy crypto now? I tend to think it is, but of course, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you which cryptos to buy. I really just look at the charts as an education point of view to help you identify some stronger horses against weaker horses. And so these are some of the signals that I look at. The BTC value, are they holding steady while BTC is falling? That's a good sign. And even if they're bouncing above their 50%, which we'll look at in the chart. So they could be down, but just sitting on their 50% levels. Uh, the fear and greed, we're looking okay, we're at neutral. We're not in this extreme fear at the moment. That can also be a good time to buy, but you just gotta look at the pattern of the chart at the point in time. You know, Is it a bear trend or is it a bull trend and we're having a sharp correction? That's what I believe we're in at the moment. Our fear and greed plan. So just an update for uh, guys who have been following the plan. Uh, total invested, 12,000. So these are all the purchase dates at the purchase prices, the purchase amount. This is what a dollar cost averaging plan would look like with particular entry triggers and um, exit triggers. So I need to have a look at some sort of exit triggers from here. So I have my own where they're based on GAN and Wyckoff rules and make sure you have some risk management. You just don't want to be piling everything into the market at any given day. I look for particular drops in the market, not just the typical little fives or 10%. I want to see certain days that I only want to buy. And this is just an easy way to put it together if you don't have a plan, something to build on, of course. So the um, return is at 39%, even with this dip. Currently sitting around $47,000 Bitcoin, which was something that we were looking at just a few weeks ago. Now, for Twitter, 
put a question up, a poll. Are you buying the dip or fearful of a bull trap? Currently, 1,200 votes. This has only been up for about an hour and 20 minutes. Um, six out of 10 people are buying the dip and four out of 10 people are either thinking it's a bull trap, so maybe they're not buying, maybe they're shorting the market and maybe they're unsure, so they're just sitting on the sidelines trying to figure out whether to buy the dip or not. So six out of 10 people are saying here that they are buying the dip. And of course, this is my audience and you guys that follow me on Twitter and um, YouTube. So maybe you have your own views that, you you know, maybe you are a different level of trader, giving you guys the benefit of the doubt here. Moving on to some of the news. And the first thing is what happened? So is a crypto crash over? Is it safe to buy? What caused the Bitcoin flash crash? I thought this, be uh, before I saw the news, like, this is what I thought it was, was just over leveraged traders or um, stops getting wiped out because of how severe and how quick it happened. That seems to be a bit of a trend for Bitcoin when we do get these really sharp correction days. So if you want to have a look at that, this is what it looks like on the charts. When we do get these flash periods of straight down, it tends to be uh, some of the leverage traders and the liquidations taking place because to get out of a trade, you have to sell. So you leverage long, you're buying for the market to go up. To cover your position, you must uh, sell. So you need to get out of the market. So you're going to sell for a profit or sell for a loss. And as more and more of these traders got hit, their stop losses get hit, then it just speeds up the fall in the market. So traders were hit hard with a $3.5 billion in liquidation uh, this took place as Bitcoin price crashed below 43 and on uh, Huobi, Huobi, it crashed below 40,000 as well. So take a look at this graph here. Bybit had $1.2 billion of liquidations, which took up about a third of the market. Um, Huobi, 850, I know I butcher the name, uh, about a quarter of the market, so 24%. Binance also had big liquidations, OKX, FTX, BitMEX, and you can see FTX is climbing the ranks. In the past 24 hours, 330,000 traders were liquidated. The largest single liquidation order happened on Huobi. BTC value at $43.7 million was liquidated. So this seems to be what the effect was. This is why Bitcoin crashed and why we're seeing such a sharp recovery as well because as fast as it comes down, it can come back up as the, uh, the buy orders get triggered as well. Of course, some of the other news out is El Salvador has bought its first 10 million of Bitcoin. El Salvador buying that dip. The country's president announced today that it has purchased 200 BTC. So the 200 cost them about 10 million. Uh, he stated this on uh, Twitter as well. Now, although the headlines are saying that El Salvador is buying the dip, they definitely didn't buy the dip. They were buying it at around a $50,000 Bitcoin. So 10 million divided by 200, $50,000. You can see from the tweet here from the president, El Salvador has just bought its first 200 coins. Our broker will be buying a lot more. So they're going to be in there buying. Hopefully they are buying the dip to average their price down. We'll wait and see. All right, crypto exchanges, a big one when it comes to crashes. If you are new to the market, this happens time and time and time again. Exchanges go down when the markets get extremely volatile. So if you do have orders on, it's very hard to get in there to close them or to set new orders. Uh, maybe you want to go and buy something or just whatever it is you need to do on the exchanges. And the three most popular cryptocurrency exchanges, Coinbase, Kraken, and Gemini reported issues. Um, some of these would have went down or maybe it was a brief period. You guys can let us know in the comments which ones have you found to be the most reliable. Let us know in the comments. Of course, I've got my uh, exchange here, SwiftX. These guys are in Australia. So for the Aussie guys, SwiftX has been very good. Our account was at 20,500 yesterday and we're at 19,000 today. This is in USD. Um, we can change that as well. The link to this is down below if you want to sign up with SwiftX to have a backup exchange. I mentioned that I have multiple exchanges just in case one of the others goes down. For international guys, you got Binance link down there as well for 10% off your trading fees. So go and check out the links down below. Set your exchanges up for the next stage of the bull market. You don't want to be caught out in something like this. Like this can really get super annoying, um, especially when the market is hot and you go, well, maybe I want to take some of the gains off of my coins which have pumped or maybe I want to sell out of the market and the, and the, the exchange is down. So check them out. Links are down below. Solana gained 8%, unknown reasons. And then the good news here is most stable coins including USDT and USDC, maintain their $1 peg. 
That's what you want to see in crisis times because there's been a lot of FUD around stable coins not holding their peg or potentially coming undone and the whole market will fall to pieces. But so far, this is looking quite good, especially uh, they're being put to the test yet again. Now onto some of the cryptocurrency news. And I like to check this briefly when we look at Cardano and we're going to look at uh, FTX and Ethereum as well. Will Cardano support smart contracts on mainnet by October 1st? So far, we have 95% saying yes, we've seen the divergence at the moment and no, and 5% at no, whereas before this was sitting around 80, 20, and it is getting closer and closer to that point there where it looks like it should almost definitely happen before October 1st. More Cardano news. Well, headlines have got my name in it. That's enough from me on this one. You guys would have seen this video already. Check it out down here if you haven't already. The main thing is all good runs will come to an end. Keep that in mind. This was just uh, an idea or a bit of a projection on ADA pricing. And of course, now ADA is down to about $2.45 as I film this video. So these returns are going to be, well, you're going to get a bigger return compared to where this video was at when we were looking at it at around $2.80. So that's the beauty about looking at buying solid corrections rather than just small dips. On to more ADA news, there is massive FUD storm underway, says Charles Hoskinson. I think we're expecting that as well. Charles Hoskinson has called on the Cardano community to ignore the FUD, remain calm and stay focused ahead of the mainnet launch. The main FUD was there have been uh, numerous reports of an error message that says UTXOS or UTXOs uh, are being used this block. So basically, there was the report of only one transaction. So uh, one transaction per block. And as soon as the report came out of the one transaction per block, parent company IOHK, Input Output Global uh, Hong Kong, was quick to state, dApps are not limited to one transaction per block. By designing your service or application with multiple UTXOs, you can enforce more parallelism. So they've tried to squash that FUD, but... Even Chow says it's, uh, it is likely that its final launch might be overshadowed by FUD. So it is possible. Look, buy the dip opportunities if you so see fit. Otherwise, sit back, relax, and enjoy the up, down, or sideways action. Next on the list is the trade that I've been looking at on Twitter. So ICP, I am not holding this long term. I can see comments down there of people saying, why would you ever talk about this? It's a junk project. It's VC scam, blah, blah, blah. That is not the point. The point of a trade is to find a good setup, enter it, and then exit it for profit or exit it at a small loss because you have your stop set. That's what trading is. Investing is holding something long-term for multiple years, not even looking at it. The majority of people are actually, that, that are in cryptocurrency are actually trading, even though they talk about investing in something. They ain't investing in Jack S, okay? They, everyone is trying to trade because they want to get more money at the end of the day. If they're actually investing, they would just buy something, hodl it, and forget about it. Okay, so with, that, with my rant out of the way, ICP punks to release 10,000 free NFTs in debut drop on the uh, internet computer, okay? I don't care for the, the project itself. Maybe you do. Either way, this is a trade for me. There is some news here. Uh, they look like they're trying to get into this, but there is a little bit of problems. We've seen a little drop on it, but the market has still held up reasonably well and the trade is still in play. We'll look at that on Twitter. So make sure you're following over there on Twitter. As for Ethereum, watch the burn. This is a pretty good site. We are at $800 million of ETH that has been burned. 233,580 ETH are down the drain. Uh, the rewards here are nearly double that. So we're getting a good drop in the uh, in the supply of ETH. So this is looking good. Again, for me, it's a lot of positive for the space and positive for the cryptos that, of course, I hold. Maybe you hold ETH, maybe you don't care for it. But the news hasn't changed. The fundamentals haven't changed. This, to me, does look like a flash crash correction with liquidations on longs, which to me answers the question, is the crypto crash over? We'll see, potentially. I think the worst of it may have happened. Don't hold me to that. But the main thing I look at here is uh, what caused it? That's what I think has caused it. That's pretty much me. And then the other question is, is it safe to buy cryptos personally? For a longer term position, I do think it is safer based on those reasons that I think it was just a liquidation event. Uh, the fundamentals haven't changed. I have cheaper prices on some of these cryptos. I may have cheaper prices tomorrow or the next day, or I may not, which is why I'll be buying some now just in case.
The last piece of news is on FTX. So Sam Bankman-Fried's trading empire adds another professional athlete to its cap table. So we've got um, Steph Curry here, Golden State Warriors, FTX Global Ambassador. He has been added to the to the FTX company. He will receive an equity stake in FTX. Good move there. Let's look at these charts and we'll start with ADA and then have a look at BTC. The main things here, we see massive wicks. I have it on candles and not bars just for the moment because you can see wicks a lot better. You can see we dropped all the way to, guess what, our 50% level. Where are we at now? We are trying to close, well, we have closed at $2.51.4. So $2.51.4, whatever that is, okay? $2.51. Where was the high? $2.51.4. It closed at the high. Look at that for resistance becoming support, at least for today. That's a pretty strong sign for me. Even if we drop back down, I'm still comfortable with uh, the market coming back to these highs, 230. I'm comfortable with it coming back to 220. This is as a close. The wicks can happen so quickly, so I'm not overly phased on it, but it's good to see where they pull up as well because of the buying volume that has come in. It came in at $2 and just pushed this thing right back up. The so low was at $2, uh, $1.90, $1.96. On the BTC chart, had a spike and it has dropped to those highs, tested those levels, another good sign. It's dropped to a major uh, 50%. Our next chart is Bitcoin, 47K. We are sitting above just of the crash, 50%. So this is the, you can call it the downtrend, you can call it the bear trend. Sitting on that 50% level, these, these numbers are around 47K. This was support previously and then broke down. Again, I'm pretty comfortable with it coming back to the 50% level of this range. Uh, this was the uptrend range and that's at 41. So we went from 47 to 41. Answer these questions here. Is a crypto crash over? Who knows? But is it a safe time to buy? Personally, I like it and I'm happy all the way down to that point there. Now onto ETH and it looks like it's done the same thing. We are at a reset, huge volume, 50% on the major downtrend based out. This was the reaccumulation zone before that last little uh, FOMO pump. And we've found support above that area. You can see the close was above that area for yesterday. This has also closed higher, starting to trickle down. But remember, this has gone on a pretty strong trend over the last couple of weeks. And so I am expecting this to take a little more time. We've seen a huge, huge bar uh, just swing wildly, one end to the next and try to close in the middle. But it's closed down uh, a little from those areas. So I'm not as strong on FTT just for the short term. Is it something I'm going to continue buying? For me, I am positioned quite well in it. And when these things go gangbusters straight up, like we talked about in yesterday's video, it is possible that they need some time to rest. So FTT looking strong, still above its old all-time highs, but it just needs some time to cool off. And the last crypto on the list is Solana. Huge volume here. If we take all of these lines off, you can see this day was similar, but it's closed higher again. We did get a break of the swings. And if we throw the lines back on, you can see that this as well, this bounced at its 50% at around that 130 bucks and it's closed up relatively high. This is what I'm concerned about with buying at all-time high prices, especially in a parabolic move. I'm not that concerned with getting myself 20 or 50% returns uh, because of the nature of the volatility once you get into these zones. So there is some good money to be made if you are only looking to hold it for, say from this dump, one, two, three, four, five, six, that seventh, the seventh day really scared people out. It could have taken out these stops. It um, you could have been shaken out of your position. That's the difficulty of buying these dips as the market goes parabolic. But everyone has their own plan, I hope. So make sure you are keeping yourself safe, especially in these volatile times, or potentially you're going to want to sit back and wait for a better correction, like a better time to get in that is less busy. They are the times you want to be into a market is when the market is less busy. There's just less noise going on. So the crypto crash, is it over? 
I'm not calling for something to be over until I see some more signs. But the healthy signs that I saw is the market is holding up on its 50% levels, especially of those uptrends. And some of the stronger cryptocurrencies are holding above their 50% levels uh, of their downtrends as well. Their major downtrend that came from around that April, May period down to around June, July. So that's a good sign for the stronger stuff. That's what I see between the strong horses and the weaker horses, which have been rejected by their 50% levels on the, on the uptrend. Um, also, safe time to buy. Personally, I like it as a dollar cost averaging time now. This is the sort of reset that I get excited about. Uh, I'd rather not be buying things as they are peaking into new all-time highs. I prefer breakouts on the breakout and then we get to see it peak. Uh, but then also as the market corrects while we're within what I believe is a, an uptrend now. Um, what caused the flash crash? We can see that. I believe it was to do with liquidation. Some of the news has come out, said the same thing. Those things happen so quick. It tends to lead me to believe that that is what it is. I don't think anything fundamentally has changed. Therefore, I still think it's a, a good dollar cost averaging time. We've gone through the news. We went through the charts. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to learn more about trading and investing, you can always check out the Investor Accelerator. The Investor Accelerator Premium is also down there below. That's the full education course find a link to that down below. Otherwise, you've got Patreon here. Um, as I mentioned earlier, about eight to 10 people are signing up per day at the moment. So check this out if you want to get involved. Otherwise, I'll see you guys at the next video. All the links are down below that I talked about today with SwiftX and Binance. Uh, make sure you've liked, subscribe, bell notification icon. I'll see you on Twitter and on Instagram. But until next time, have more fun to get more done.